Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is the most iconic game show to have aired around the world. The show first aired in 1998, and since then it has been shown in many countries and adapted into many languages. Its extreme popularity is undoubtedly attributable to its amazing format, which keeps it interesting with the right amount of risk. For viewers, the game show's appeal lies in the concept that anyone with any background can change their lives in 12 questions. What's not to love? Who Wants to Be a Millionaire has aired in 160 countries since its inception, with many contestants having won sizable prizes in the last 22 years. Keep watching for interesting facts on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and its many versions. Facts First presents Scandalous Cover-Ups on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. If you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, as well as hit the bell icon to stay updated on our upcoming videos. The show may be called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but the winner certainly does not take home a million dollars. Why? 40% of the total winnings are deducted as taxes. This number can go further based upon the profession of the contestant. Thus, if a contestant wins a million dollars, they take home only 600000 That's pretty decent money, but it's not a million dollars. The creators of the show make you believe it's quite easy to get on the show. All you have to do is answer a few questions over the phone, and you'll be the next person to answer a few questions for a million dollars. In truth, getting on the show is quite difficult. To start with, individuals are selected from a lottery drawing containing the names of thousands of people. Those few who get selected have to travel to New York on their own dime. Then they go through an elaborate selection procedure, during which producers choose or decline them based on their intelligence as well as personality. Before moving on to the next scandalous cover-up, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our new videos. During the first season of the American version of the show, many contestants won big money. After this, Lloyds of London, the insurance company responsible for million-dollar payouts, decided to sue the producers of the show. According to Lloyds of London, the questions asked on the show were so simple that winning a million dollars was obviously easy. The British tabloids sensationalized the news with The Guardian noting that in the American version of the show, one just had to be American and not even smart to win the top prize. Now well, that wasn't fair. You would imagine a show like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire would hire geniuses, or at least really smart people, to work as writers on the show. Well, that isn't true. The show hires normal people who, like other normal people, use Google to become smart. In an interview, one of the show's writers confessed that they used the phrase, who is the only, to search for information on Google and use this information to draft questions. You'd also imagine contestants must choose geniuses to help them with the phone-a-friend lifeline. Well, that isn't true either. The producers of the show thoroughly check and interview the people chosen by contestants for the phone-a-friend lifeline. In most cases, the lifelines are not geniuses, but normal people who use Google to look up the answer and inform their friend. Well, Google is everyone's best friend, apparently. The show's set stands in stark contrast with the sets of other game shows. The music score of the show is inspired by the heartbeat of human beings, and was designed to keep the contestants feeling nervous. If you have ever noticed, as the questions advance and the prize money increases, the set becomes darker and darker. This was done deliberately to keep the pressure high on the contestants. Variations of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire are broadcast in almost 160 countries around the world. Each variant differs in some way or the other from the original show, and millions of viewers watch the local version of this originally British show every year. However, in every version, one thing remains the same. The host of the show must wear Armani suits. The company that created the show mentioned in the contract all syndication hosts must wear Armani suits. Ed Towton from Austin, Texas, is the only contestant to have invited to the show twice. During his first appearance, Ed was asked an incorrect question and thought he gave the right answer to it. Due to research errors, he was eliminated. However, the creators of the show accepted their mistake and invited Ed to come back and play once again. Before becoming the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Regis Philbin was a morning talk show host, drawing an average salary. He joined Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on a normal salary, too. However, after the first season became such a huge hit, Regis asked for his contract to be renegotiated. With each season, Regis's payout kept increasing. It's believed Regis was earning $300,000 per episode during later episodes. This doesn't seem fair when you hear how Regis was not actually all that smart in real life. Some people who auditioned to be on the show claimed that the producers of the show told them Regis was actually quite dumb in real life. When Major Charles Ingram appeared on the British version of the show, the entire country was actually rooting for him. Charles had debts worth $70,500, and therefore the audience naturally wanted him to win big. 
And Charles won, too. He answered the million-dollar question correctly. However, the makers of the show later found out Charles had won fraudulently. His wife and his friends sitting in the audience would cough every time the host read the correct answer to Charles. Charles was, of course, stripped of his winnings. What's worse, he was even demoted in the army. In Afghanistan, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was aired in two languages, the local Pashto and the widely spoken Farsi. The show's top prize is shockingly low. Winners take home 1 million Afghan dollars, which is roughly 13,000 U.S. dollars. It's still a sizable amount for those residing in the country since an average Afghan earns much less than $13,000 every year. Lerchlak Panchanawaporn, a contestant on Thailand's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire format, won people's hearts when she became the second person to win the top prize, 1 million baht, or approximately $32,000 U.S. It was later found there was a hardware error, and the cable supposed to be linked to the presenter's screen was linked to hers instead. As a result, the right answers were highlighted on her screen. Not very surprisingly, the producers stripped her of her winnings. She was allowed to play again, but she only went as far as 25,000 baht. Asen Kisimov, a famous Bulgarian actor, singer, composer, and personality, was famed as the only Bulgarian ever to answer the final question worth $1 million Bulgarian, or 600000 in the U.S., correctly. Unfortunately, it was later revealed his daughter worked for the TV station that broadcast the show, which disqualified his win. Phil Gibbons, a contestant on the U.S. show, was off to a shaky start and struggled through his first few questions. He spent his first lifeline, Ask the Audience, on a $2,000 question, his second lifeline, 50-50, on the $4,000 question, and the third lifeline, Phone a Friend, on the $8,000 question. Surprisingly, he powered through the rest of the game without any help and did splendidly. He reached the final question, at which point he walked away with $500,000 since he wasn't sure of the answer. Britain's millionaire went through some serious cheating drama, which made everyone a lot more cautious and suspicious. Martin Flood won the top prize on Australia's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but suspicions of cheating tarnished his win. Unfortunately for him, an audience member coughed just as he was solving a question. In light of the similarity with the scandal surrounding Britain's millionaire, Martin's winnings were frozen for months. Eventually, the producers cleared him of any unfair means, but the whole fiasco certainly cost him the win's credibility in public opinion. Aroma Ofudike is the only contestant to have won the top prize on Nigeria's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Ufudike hailed from the small village of Newi and took home $10 million Nigerian, approximately 26000 U.S. The phone-a-friend lifeline helped him win his last question, and he called his cousin for the right answer. Usually, movies are inspired by real life. But in the case of India's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire format, life imitated art and not the other way around. The 8 Academy Award winner Slumdog Millionaire is based on the life of a slum dweller who goes on to win the show. The first winner of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in India was Sushil Kumar, who had an impoverished childhood in slums. He later revealed he intended to use his winnings to buy a house for his family. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire has had only two English-speaking winners so far, Judith Keppel and Nancy Christie. Both were single at the time they won, which makes it seem as though only single women win on the show. Two decades since the inception of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, it continues to win hearts around the world. The super entertaining game show is a popular primetime option in many countries even today. If you haven't watched it, or if you've watched only a few episodes here and there, we suggest you fix that right away and stream some of the episodes where contestants have played amazingly well and gone home much, much richer than before. Do let us know which episodes you particularly enjoyed in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you. Further, if there are any controversies or cover-ups we missed and that you know of, please let us know in the comments section. If you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting facts, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos.